shall steal his glory. No thing shall get his glory. He said, you should have no other God before me. But yet we put other gods before him. So many levels. We give everything praise but him. We worship him and we bow before him. And we cry, holy. Holy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. We're talking about Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. Our Father God is worthy. Say it again, Byron. Say it again. Is your name Join with him. Jesus Worthy let that be your sacrifice name. of praise this morning. Worthy of all praise. Worthy of all praise. Worthy is your name. Come on, come on, give it to him. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. You're worthy of all praise. My God, my God. You're worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. in the name of Jesus. The heavens declare, O oh God, 
they declare your glory. And the skies proclaim your handiwork, oh God. Father, we thank you today because you are a faithful creator. Your creations are amazing, God. What a mighty God we serve. You declared and the wonderful and the fearfully that we are made. You created us from the dust of the ground. You breathe life unto us. We would not be living even now had it not been for you, oh God. Touching us this morning with the hand of love. You thought, oh God, that we should live yet another day. And Father, we thank you for it. Father, we don't know what the next minute will bring, but even now, God, we will bring you praise and glory. We will sacrifice our praise unto you, oh God. You said, oh God, that we are living sacrifices. Our bodies should be living sacrifices unto you, oh God. Hallelujah, holy and acceptable unto you, oh God, which is our reasonable service. Hallelujah. You don't ask much of us, God. But what you ask, oh God, we should be obedient to give it unto you, oh Lord. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That as you are our maker and that you are the potter and that we are the clay, oh God. That you have created us masterpieces, oh God. Hallelujah. In your image, God. You have created us, God, male and female, God, in the name of Jesus. Having your characteristics, that in the name of Jesus, that we must bring forth those characteristics, God, as we live in this world. Hallelujah. Demonstrating who you are in, in us, God, that people may see us. See you in us, God, as we are the light of the world, oh God. Hallelujah, we are lights, God, and we are salt, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we will not hide our light. We will not hide it under a bushel. We will not deny that we love you, God. We will not deny that you are our Lord. We will not deny, oh God, who you are in our lives. But God, we will just call forth your praise. We would speak your praise all throughout the land, God. Wherever we go, we will praise you. We will worship you, God. Hallelujah, we thank you. We thank you, God, because you are merciful and you are kind. God, your grace is sufficient for us, Lord. You told us that we could come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may find mercy there. But God, people are too mean-spirited to even come to the throne of grace, God, to even cry out to you, God, in the time of their need, oh God. Help us, oh God, to look unto the hills from whence cometh our help, knowing that our help comes from you. No one else can do this, oh God, but only you can. You can fix every situation. You can provide every need, oh God. You can open doors that no man can shut, and you can shut doors that no man can open, oh God. We thank you, God, for doing it. You didn't have to do it, oh God, but I thank you today that you did. Oh, God, we give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. You didn't give us justice. You didn't deal with us according to justice, oh, God. Hallelujah, God. We didn't love you like we should love you, God. But you did. You still gave us grace. Hallelujah for your grace and your mercy. Follow us all the days of our lives. God, we deserve to be in, in, in our grave, but God, you're keeping us. You're keeping us alive, and God, you have purpose for us, and Lord, let us seek that purpose even now, God. There is something greater than what we are doing now, God. 
Let us seek it. Let us run after you. As the heart run after the water brook, oh God. We hunger and we thirst after you, oh God. We hunger and thirst after righteousness, God, because you said we will be filled. Hallelujah, God. We are blessed and we are highly favored, oh God, because of your love and your mercy. We thank you, God, for meeting every one of our needs. Father, we thank you for your glory surround this house. You are present in this place, oh God. You are present with us. And we thank you, God, that we see your train. We see your glory, oh God. Fall in this place afresh, oh God. Fall in this place, oh God, upon your people, God. Walk up and down these aisles. Show yourself strong, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Father, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of those that we have transgressed against, oh God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that we will go and ask for forgiveness for all that we have done wrong, oh God. All that we've said, oh God, all that we've done that was not pleasing unto you. Let us come to you, God, asking for forgiveness that we may be restored back in right relationship with you. God, I pray that the word will fall in power today. Light up on your manservant that he may hear your word, oh God, and speak it forth unto us in the name of Jesus. You have prepared him today. Hallelujah for each and every one that will be here today. There is something for you in this word today. And I thank you that this word would be delivered unto our hearts in power and in strength, oh God. And that we will open our hearts to receive it in the name of Jesus. And not just receive it, but be doers of it, God. You said it's not enough that we may be Uh, hearers of the word but we must do the word oh God I thank you that we will put every word that we receive into practice into our lives that we may be strong and built up in our earnest faith oh God hallelujah encourage as we go day by day oh God healed and delivered and set free for your word do all these things and more for us God your word comforts us Your word heals us. Your word delivers us, oh God. Your word free us, oh God. Your word is a judge, oh God, unto us. Your word, oh God, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Your word, oh God, is a banner over us. Hallelujah, we thank you. We thank you, God. Your word is alive and fresh, oh God. We thank you for your rhema word that will be spoken on today. That we may receive what we need in these bodies and in our flesh, oh God, and in our hearts. We thank you for doing it. Thank you for blessing our manservant and everyone that is here today. Everyone that is under the sound of my voice, God, bless them. Give them a fresh anointing, oh God. Give them a fresh start. Hallelujah. Give them a, a, a new headwind, oh God. Hallelujah. Whether it's those, those uh, dreams and those desires and wishes, oh God, have died, God, bring life unto them again in the name of Jesus. And so, yes, God, we call dead things alive right now, oh God, by your word. Hallelujah. Send your word, oh God. We send your word to every backslider. We send your word to everyone that is not calling you Lord and Savior. We send your word now, oh God, that they may get up in that dead place, oh God, and that they may come alive in you, oh God. Hallelujah. Strengthen those that are almost dead. Bring them alive again, God. Renew their strength in the name of Jesus. God, we call these things done.
by your spirit, we say it is so. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for this word, for this prayer, oh God. We thank you for your ever-abiding presence. Our God is a good God. He's a faithful God. You alone. He's our strength and our shield. Say that. you're going through, no matter what you're waiting on, no matter what blessing you're waiting on, God is still for you. Amen. Hallelujah. No matter what storm you may be going through, the word of God says, this I know, God is for you. Amen. Can you claim that this morning? God is for me. Hallelujah. Psalms. 56, hallelujah. We thank God this morning for you. As we go to the announcements, we are thanking God for all that the Lord is doing through this ministry. As we often say, it is not bodily, um, large, proud of us, but those of us that are here, we put our hands to the plow and we don't look back. And we serve our uh, community through the ministries of this church and every one of you take a part in that and we thank God for you this ministry would not be so had it not been been for you amen and all that you do and so we are thanking God for you even now every part that you play everything that you do every service that you provide to the people in this community and abroad, we thank God for you. We thank God for you. So we ask that you would continue to follow us and like us on our platforms, our uh, Facebook page, our TikTok page, Instagram, and YouTube pages. We ask that you would follow us, like us, and that you may uh, receive all of the uh, announcements and notifications that we may have to the community at large and we just thank you for doing that we truly thank you for coming on our Bible study time on Wednesday nights on our Sunday services and just all mama's need for everything that we offer you you are coming on and we are thanking God for that you are following us and we just love you for that um, then God get all of the praise a Girl Scout troop is getting real busy I thank God for Sister Fonda and her mother Sister Deanna Sister Stacy Brother Gerald Pastor Joseph Pastor Minister Byron and myself I thank God God for what the Lord is doing. We are 17 girls strong right now. God is amazing. 
We had 10 for a long time, and all of a sudden, on Friday night, they all showed up. My God, my God, God is an amazing God, and we have an agenda for them for the next three months. They are going to be busy, and we ask that you would just pray for us for all of the endeavors that we have uh, that they are going to be engaging in, but I am just so proud that <clears throat> they are going to be learning how to sew, and they are going to be creating items for the homeless here in this area. Come on, come on. They have a lot to learn, not just that, but in every area, life skills, yes. things that they will take for them to life. Yes. They will learn new uh, 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 entrepreneurial skills in, in the sale of our cookies. By the way, we are selling Girl Scout cookies right now. So don't leave here today without getting your cookie order in. Just see any one of us. <laughs> we have them for you. So, um, but just know that the next two months, in February and in March, the young ladies are going to be sewing uh, blankets as well as um, they are going to be um, doing the sleeping bags for the homeless here in this area. So we just thank God even now for all that they're going to learn, their experiences, and what God is going to do at their hands. Amen? Amen. Uh, they also are going to have, um, on February the 10th, they're going to have going to Baltimore to the Black Wax Museum. I don't know if our bus is full. No seats available. So we all, we all ready to go. All of the seats are sold out. And we expect them to learn a lot in that endeavor, amen? And so when they come back, we will be asking of them, what did they learn? So we're asking our young girls that they will make sure that their eyes are open and their ears are open, that they may hear and learn from that experience, amen? Amen. Also, they will be uh, going to Disney on Ice in Hershey in uh, March, and if anybody want to go along with us, we, you can go. The cost is $60, uh, so we're asking that you, if you're willing to go, see Sister Stacy, wave your hand. She will get your name on the list so then that we can go as a uh, group together. Amen? So this is, this is, these are the things that our Girl Scouts are engaging in and many more in this month. We thank you that you are continuing to uh, tune in on Saturdays at 4 p.m. for Mama's Knee. That is hosted by Minister Iris Winters. We thank God, we thank God for her and all that she is bringing unto this community and at large. <clears throat> also, going back to our Girl Scouts, I'm missing one point, we need adult volunteers. We need your skill sets. If you are administrators, if you are drivers, if you are have specialties that you can share, entrepreneurship, any kind of basic skills that you want to share with our young ladies, we need you. Because everything they learn, they can earn their badges and their awards yeah. and their pins to demonstrate the areas of things that they have uh, amassed and have uh, accomplished, all right? But we need uh, volunteers to come in to help us on Friday nights with our young girls. One of the things that is a requirement for so many numbers that we have, we must have so many volunteers to be on staff to make sure of their safety, yeah. to make sure that uh, everything will flow well. And so hands are needed. Multiple hands are needed. We need you. So please consider going on uh, the Girl Scout of Harrisburg page and volunteering. Sign up to volunteer get your clearances in so then that you can come alongside us and help 
bring a wonderful world of learning to our young girls. Amen? So we need you. We need you. We need you. Um, so uh, just wanted to bring that into your hearing. Also, we want to recognize our January's birthdays for today. Alana Mays. Come on up, baby. Come on. Come on up. I need you to come up to me. Come on. Your beautiful self. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she lovely? Happy birthday, darling. I love your hairdo today. Mama, you did good. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Also, our nephew, Jason Morrison's birthday is today. God bless those two young people. Amen. He is 21 years old. And Alana, you are nine years old today. God is blessing. God is blessing. We God bless you. Let's say happy birthday to her. Let us sing to her. Oh. We did find it last Sunday. Nia is today? On the 20th. All right, let's sing happy birthday. Nia, stand up, baby. We're going to say happy birthday to you as well. Come on, Byron, can you do it? We're just going to sing it. Happy birthday. The old uh, happy birthday. Is that what we're going to do? Come on, son. Do your specialty. join that she may come and extend a hearty welcome unto you. Come on, let's give God some praise for this beautiful woman of God. Amen. I want to give thanks to the Lord for guiding us here today, yes, yes. successful, all of us. Amen. You know, he knew who was going to be here today. Yes. And we give him thanks and praise for all that he has done for us. Yes. I want to say good morning and welcome to our full gospel family, Amen. visitors, and friends. Yes. You know, it is such a beautiful thing to have a church to go to. You know, because there's so many people that don't, have, that don't have a church to go to. But we do. And it's a church. It's not a big church. But it's a right on time church. Yes, and, it God. yes. and in our hearts, you know, we are here. Because we thank him for so many things. We thank him for loving us. We give him thanks for guiding us. We give them thanks for providing and protecting for us. We give them thanks for having our feet on solid ground. You know, we give them thanks for all that he does. There is so many things, it's so many things that he do. And sometimes we forget to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because things happen for us. And, you know, sometimes I find myself saying, God, I thank you. You did that. I wasn't paying attention, but you did it. You did it. Yes, you did it. And I thank you. I thank you. I thank him for my family. I thank him for my friends. I thank him for my neighbors. 
and so I mean it's such a beautiful thing as I get older I wonder and I said Lord thank you for keeping me here you know thank you for the things that you allow me to see the things that you have taught me and so I mean it is so many things you know I said I thank you that my family is near me you know and I thank them because they love me. No, ma no matter what I go through and when I act up, they still love me. <laughs> because I do act up. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I thank them because he forgives me for those times that I am not at my best. <coughs> but however, I thank you, Lord, because you love me. But most and most and most of all, I thank you for Jesus, that he laid his life down for me. He covered me with his blood. He paid my sin debt with his blood. I mean, past, present, and future, you know, everything, he took care of me. He took care of me. He healed me when I didn't think that I could be healed. You know? I thank you for so many things. And I thank him for my pastor, you know, <coughs> and I love my pastors. I thank you for this church. And so I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Father. I thank you. I praise you and I honor you for all things. And so hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so, you know, we have, we got to give thanks. We got to get thanks. You know, families, families separate, but he brings them back together. Yes. Open up your heart and your mind for forgiveness for, yes. you know, our families don't always and our friends don't always do the right things Amen. by us. But, you know, there comes a time when we got to say, Lord, I forgive them. Amen. And he heals us back together. Yes. So, you know, um, we don't always do the right thing, but he gives us grace, and, you know, he forgives us, and I thank him, you know, he takes care of everything, and so just open up our hearts and our minds and say, Lord, I thank you, I thank you. Intelligence won't do it, but the spirit of our Father, he does it all the time, you know. It's our spirit, you know. We got to worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, sometimes we think our, our intelligence is, no, because mm -mm. we don't know the heart of the man. Only God knows the heart of, her, no, the heart of man. So I want to thank you here today in your rightful places, our ministry of music, our ministry of music, our pastors, all our elders, and everyone in their rightful place. So pastor will bring the word to us, open up your heart, and receive it if it's for you. Don't let it pass you by. Receive it. And you'll know, you will know how God is for you. Amen. Amen, amen. We thank God for Mother, praise the Lord for wonderful words of encouragement, praise God. We thank God for Pastor Nancy who uh, did a warm uh, opening up our services. We thank God for her. Amen, amen. We're so grateful that you're here. Amen. amen. Uh, I thank God that the Lord is blessing us and to those of you that are here with us today, our church family, thank you for coming, praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. For those of you that are online on our live stream, praise the Lord, either by Facebook or by YouTube. Amen. Uh, uh, TikTok, we thank God for you. And Instagram, we thank God for you also as well that you're on. And we want to say good morning. Good morning, everybody. Praise morning. the Lord. Morning. And so good morning to everybody. Praise God that it's here. Amen. I want my deacon, if he would come up front. Amen. I want you to sit up here, please, sir. Amen. Glory to God and uh, have him come up here. Amen. I want to thank God for all of you that are here. 
Again, I am so grateful for the birthdays and the month. Praise the Lord. And I just want to say to you, parents, celebrate your children. Praise the Lord. Uh, celebrate them because when I was coming up as a young man, my mother was not able to bake a cake with 10 kids in the house. Amen. But every now and then she would bring a cupcake home. Amen. And put a candle on it. And that was our birthday gift. Amen. So celebrate your children. Amen. And thank God for them and their birthday. So we thank God for all of the birthdays. Amen. Particularly for our children. Praise the Lord. I thank God for them. So we want to welcome you. We thank God for you. We certainly want to acknowledge our leadership and that of our pastor, assistant pastor, Pastor Nancy. Amen. Our elder, Elder Brenda Goodjoy. Praise the Lord. Our minister, Minister Iris Winters. We thank God for her. Amen. Our trustee, Brother James Goodjoy and his lovely wife, Mother Brenda. Amen. Our deacon, Deacon Antoine, amen, and his son, amen, and the family, amen, and our uh, trustee, amen, uh, newest trustee, Brother Gerald, amen, and Deanna Chambers, amen. We thank God for them as well. Our minister of music, Minister Byron Linder, praise the Lord. We thank God uh, for him as well. I thank God, amen, for our uh, evangelist that's here with us quite often, Evangelist Lily. We thank God for her that's here in our midst, visiting with us, amen, and her daughters. We thank God for them. Thank God for you in the congregation. Without you, there would be no church, amen. We thank God for you, praise the Lord. So at this time, we're going to have uh, our call to worship scripture will be given to us by uh, Brother Gerald. And then following that will be our uh, responsive reading of scripture will be given by Elder Brenda, amen, in that order. Amen, Brother Gerald, it's in your hand. Good morning, Full Gospel. Good morning. Right. This one's called a worship scripture. We're coming from Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Join me on your feet when you have it. Psalms 100, where the Lord follows. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen, amen. Amen, if you could remain standing, amen, and hear from our elder, Elder Brenda. Good morning, church. Good morning. Our responsive reading today will be coming from Psalms 145. Psalms 145, we'll be reading the entire chapter. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, but yes. And um, if you have, our Bible is on page 432. Psalms 145, this is a responsive reading, verses 1 through 21. And the word of God reads, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every, Every day, day will I bless, bless thee, and, and I, I will, will praise, praise thy, thy name forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, mm -hmm. and his greatness is unsearchable. One, One generation, generation shall, shall praise thy works to, to another. another and, and shall, shall declare, declare thy, thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and thy wondrous, wondrous works. And, and men, men shall speak of the might of thy, of thy terrible, terrible acts. 
and I, I will declare, declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing in thy righteousness. The Lord, the Lord is, is gracious and full of compassion, compassion slow to anger, and great mercy. mercy. The Lord is good to mm -hmm. all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All, all the works, works shall praise thee, O Lord, Lord and, and thy saints, saints shall bless thee. thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom, and talk of thy power to make known, known the to sons, sons of, of men his mighty acts and, and the, the glorious majesty of his kingdom. his kingdom. The kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, mm -hmm. and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The, the Lord, Lord upholdeth all that fall and, and raises up all those that be bowed down. down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, mm -hmm. and thou givest them their near in due season. Thou, thou openest thine, thine hand, hand and, and satisfies the desire of every living thing. thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, mm -hmm. and holy in all his works. The Lord, the Lord is, is nigh unto, unto all of them that call upon, upon him, him, to, to all, all that call upon, upon him in truth. truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Mm -hmm. The Lord, Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked, wicked will he destroy. destroy. And all together, my, my mouth, mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, Lord and, and let all flesh bless his holy name. name forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Praise Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for his word. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for you at this time. You may rest off of your feet. We thank God for you. We thank God for this time. And we ask the Lord to come in and to fill this house. And he's here already. Praise the Lord. And we just want to let him know that we thank him. Amen. For being a part of our fellowship and we being a part of him. Praise the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I want all of him. Praise the Lord. I desire all of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to be like the psalmist said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Praise the Lord. Let the Lord know I want every bit of him. Not I want one drop to go to waste. Praise the Lord. And so we thank God for you coming in this time. We're going to lift our offering. We're going to ask, amen, our deacon, Deacon Antoine, our trusty brother, uh, Gerald, if they will come, amen, and prepare our hearts and our minds for uh, the giving, and uh, they're going to uh, reach out to you. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. They will help you out in that area. As they pass out the envelopes, raise your hand. They will make sure that you get that, uh, and then we will go to our scripture reading for the morning that can be found, amen, in the gospel of Luke. And while you're grabbing the envelopes, I want to remind everyone that uh, if you fill them out, make sure that you're filling them out legibly, amen, and that we can understand it, that uh, my wife and I can understand it, that we put it into our, our computer system and then all information that we need, that you make sure that you're marking down where you would want it to go, amen. So we ask that you would do that, amen. Praise the Lord, praise God. Our scripture reading will be found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 6, verse 38. We are most familiar with that scripture the word of God says give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom for with the same measure that ye meet with it all shall be measured to you again and notice in the verse that it says that the same measure you use will return to you if you're generous church family generosity will be returned to you in full measure if you're stingy and uncharitable amen such will be the standards by which you will be judged unjustly amen so give unto god give generously and the lord will bless you and i thank god i have generous people here that know how to give i thank you for those that are watching us by live stream amen you see it on our 
application on our Facebook page, the various ways that you can give to the ministry. You'll see that you can give it either by Cash App or PayPal. You can do that. You can give it, praise the Lord, by online giving. Amen. If you wish to do that. Amen. And if you don't have a place where you send your tithes and your offering to, praise the Lord, would you consider sending that into full gospel? Amen. And we thank God for you uh, at this time. Praise the Lord. And uh, I thank God, amen, for those that are online that are sending their tithes in and offering in. I thank God for not only that, that you're also following us on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. And I thank God for you as well. At this time, we're going to uh, certainly, amen, lift the offering basket up. And I'm going to ask Praise the Lord. Uh, Evangelist Lily, would you pray over our offering basket, please? Can you do that for me, please? Praise the Lord. Would you all, uh, amen, bow in a word of prayer with her? Evangelist Lily, would you come, please? Thank you, ma'am. Father God, we thank you for the spirit that they give. Yes, Lord. Because it's the spirit that leads us. Yes, Lord. We ask, Lord, that those that couldn't afford or didn't have it to give, but Jesus. We just know, mm. even though they didn't have, yes, they'd still Lord. be blessed anyway. Because yes, Lord. The presence of the Lord is what's required. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, we ask that this blessing of the monetary money that we receive, Jesus. that we received in love, and it goes for the prospering of your kingdom. Yes, Lord. Now it's not about us, it's all about you. So yes, thank Lord. You for each yes, Lord. Every penny that we get. Jesus. Give you all Hallelujah. Honor and glory for allowing us just to be in your yes, presence Lord. to be able to give what we have to give. We thank you, we honor you, and we bless you. In yes, Lord. Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Evangelist Lily. Thank you, church. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for your giving, your seed offering. We thank God for your giving at this time. Praise the Lord. And now we're going to be blessed. Amen. And we're going to hear from a worship leader as he's going to come amen and bless us and the songs that the lord has prepared on his heart today amen we ask amen that you just not sit there but that you will rejoice in with him as he rejoices in lifting up the name of the lord jesus christ at this time we'll yield the floor to our worship leader mr byron amen god bless you pastor bless you god bless you full gospel good morning good morning God bless you to those who are watching with us online this morning. Uh, as I always say, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. You know, that we can come together to fellowship together in the presence of our God. That we can come to receive what God has for us today. Amen. You know, um, and, as, and as his children, God desire desires us to to know him more to know him Amen. and what does that mean saints it means that you want to be close to him yes, Lord. you want to be intimate with him Amen. you know um, intimacy the Lord gave me a revelation about intimacy you know, man's way is thinking about it's a physical thing. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to God, true intimacy is having a heart to heart with the Father. Yeah. That's what intimacy is yeah. unto the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. It's having a heart to heart yes. with the Father. Yes. Yes. And so because he wants to know you. But the question rises up, do you want to know him? Do you want to know him for yourself? You know, our, our, our pastor spoke of last Sunday, it ain't, a, it, it ain't what your father's religion or your mother's religion or your grandmom or your grandfather. It's up to you. God is calling you individually to come spend time with him. You know, so because he wants to use you for his glory. He wants to make you an instrument for him. Amen. And so this morning, if we can, and, and, and those who are watching with us, get this time to get in the presence of the Lord Amen. and to glean from Father's heart today, you know, and what he has for you to understand concerning you. Amen. Hallelujah. Not nobody else. 
concerning you. Because God's going to deal with you today. He deals with you. Nobody else but you. And so this morning, if you will, if you please stand on your feet and honor God. And, 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 and you are free in this house today. You're free in, in wherever you are today, those who are watching online, to take this time now to stop what you're doing. Quiet yourself in the presence of God and listen unto the Father's voice. He speaks in various ways. He, did, he just not speaks audibly unto you. He speaks through nature. He speaks through sounds. He speaks through, the, uh, 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 through dreams. He speaks in various ways. So it's up to you to figure out what way is God speaking to you today. Amen. Hallelujah. I 
just to be close to you in my desire. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to know you, Lord, in the power of your might, so I can be a name for you. I want to know you, Lord, in the power share real quick. When I first rededicated my life back to Christ back in 2010 because I used to be a drug dealer a fornicator a womanizer hmm. user of drugs and alcohol But yet God still talk with me. Been in prison twice. Don't want to go back. It's been over 17 years since I've been in the system. But I thank God. But the Lord still spoke with me to get my attention because he had a plan for my life. God has a plan for you guys. It's up to you to figure it out. And so when I, back in 2010, when I made a vow to God, I said, I'm done. Living a life of sin. Used to be a smoker of weed and cigarettes. I was two packs a day of cigarettes. Blowing my lungs up. But I said, God, I'm done living this life. I am done. I am done. And so God knew I was ready. He took everything from me. The taste of alcohol, the taste of cigarettes, the taste of drugs, fornication, all that stuff, the lustful spirit, he took it from me. And so one night I was in bed and he showed me him sitting on the throne 
and a little boy sitting on his lap my God, my God. with his left ear unto his heart. My God, my God. Today, God is trying to call us unto his heart today. Yeah. Will you sit on Father's lap today yeah. to hear his heart for you? He wants to pour out his heart unto you, family. Those who are watching with us this morning, he wants to, to speak to you. Yeah, he knows what you have done. He knows what you've been through. But do you know where you're going? Do you know where you're going? Do you know where you're going? Look at the times that we're living in, family. There's so much chaos going on around us. There's so much confusion being spread upon us. But do you know the truth of God? Do you know the word of God for yourself? Do you understand that God is calling you unto you himself? God is calling you. Because he wants to use you as his instrument. Because for those who are in the world, you were used by Satan as an instrument to spread chaos, destruction, so how come you can't do it for God? How come you want to be used by God to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations? To use your testimony to help somebody. To deliver somebody. To save somebody. That's what God wants to do with your life. To be an instrument. Glory of God. I want to know you more. And the power of your might. So I can be an instrument for you. I want to know you, Lord. In the power of your might, so I can be an instrument, so I can be an instrument, oh God, so I can be an instrument for you. He says, <laughs> I don't want you to be a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, those are instruments. <laughs> yes, those are instruments. Yeah. He don't, he don't, that's not what he desires of you. But he wants to use you mightily. So, matters to Father. Winning souls. There's so many souls right now that are lost. In God has given souls unto you to win the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus came to win you.
And you can do the same in your own job. Your classmates, your, your neighborhood family. Need to know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. But how can they? Open your mouth. And share. Love your family. We thank God for Minister Byron, the playing of the music, the ministry in word, scripture, the holy word of the living God. We thank God for him. We thank God for his assistant, amen, in beating on the sticks, whoever that was. I heard you, praise the Lord. Making the sound, Sister Fonda, praise the Lord. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap for that, praise the Lord. Says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. We thank God for that as well. I want to acknowledge, amen, again with us today. Amen. Sister Gina Holmes, would you stand? We're glad to have you here. Praise the Lord. So grateful to see you again with us today. Praise the Lord. We just want to acknowledge you as a guest in the house. Amen. And we thank God for you. Praise the Lord. So glad that you came back to visit with us. Amen. 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 Brother. Yeah. Yeah, I found I found that out last week. <laughs> I found that out last week, nephew. Praise the Lord. We all related. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. I thank God for her. I thank God for you at this time. Would you look at your neighbor to your right and to your left and say good morning and say welcome to them. Good morning, good morning. Those of you on Facebook again, good morning. Amen. It's almost noon. Praise the Lord. Good morning. We thank God for you. I want to invite this morning your attention to the word of the living God in the book. Before we go there, I just want you to hear me first. Let's, let's just prepare. Get your Bibles out. Just get that ready. Praise the Lord. I just want to minister this morning on a particular subject. But before we go there, uh, I want us to just prepare our hearts and our minds. Just have your Bibles ready at the ready. Praise the Lord. And I thank God for this Sunday. I thank God because it's the last Sunday, amen, in this new in this year, or the beginning of this month, I should say, it's the last Sunday in this month. Mm -hmm. It is our fourth Sunday. Mm -hmm. And truth be told, for some of us, life has not been what we imagined it to be, amen, these past few weeks. Mm -hmm. In fact, we certainly expect a new and a better life. But instead, the pressures of life seem to show up again to us in many different ways, in many different shapes, in many different forms. And sometimes you and I, we find ourselves working longer hours. We find ourselves, amen, still staying up all night. Some of us find it hard to still make ends meet. And only to see, even in our finances, that instead of our checkbook getting a little bit better, mm -hmm. it seems to be dwindling down a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Some of us have been getting up early in the morning, well. amen, and going to bed late at night. Well. Well, well, well. And that's taking its toll on many of us. Well, it seems like the more we give out, the less seems to come back in. Some of us are spending little time with family. Well, Why? Because we have to work long hours, right. long days, and long nights. Sometimes we seem as though that when we leave one ship, we got to go and start another. Well, well. How many of you know that even working jobs, on a job, you're still working long hours, but when you go back home, you got to work some more long hours. Well, you're working another job it doesn't seem like it ends there and I know that this sounds familiar to some of you and some of you are understanding that you feel like you're under a whole lot of pressure 
You feel like life seems to be squeezing every bit of drop out of you. You feel like your strength is gone. When I went to the doctor some time ago, they gave me a stress ball. Some of us know what that's all about. We've been in the hospital. We've had that. It's either to pump our veins up so they can get blood out. And when they can't find none, they'll stick the vein. The, when they can't find nothing. And so this is the way we feel as though we feel as though that we've been drained out. Nothing is to be working. Nothing seems to be mattering in our life. Come on, say amen. amen. We seem like the world around us, church family, is squeezing us and pressing us against the wall. Every time we feel as though we seem as there's daylight, darkness seems to appear. Come on, say amen. amen. We seem as though that we just can't get a, a, an edge up on anything. We appear, it appears as though that life seems to have us drowning in the cesspool of this world. But I'm here to let you know, amen, that God is still faithful. I'm here to let you know that God is still sitting on the throne. I'm here to let you know that God is the answer for anything and everything that we feel as though that we cannot escape and cannot get out of. But let me tell you something else. Let me ask you another question. And this is a big one this morning. Amen. I don't want you to miss it. Amen. As you place it before you this morning. Have you ever asked the question? What God wants of you? Have you ever asked the question, God, what do you want from me? I know what we want from God. Amen. Hallelujah. But what can he get from you? Come on, say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And it's an important question because we tend to live like we want to live. We tend to do what we want to do. Some folks want to, amen, have fun and more in their paycheck because they want to use that, amen, to identify with the world. Uh-oh. Come on. Do you get no amen on that? Amen. Some folks, amen, want to make, amen, a, a living, a, an extra money so they can go out and hang out with the fellas and the boys and the girls, amen. Some folks want to do that because they want to, amen, understand they want to enjoy the pleasures of life for a little while. We want to do what we want to do, when we want to do it, and at the times we want to do it. Come on, say amen. amen. And we do that without considering what God wants for us. We get upset when things don't work out for our good. We want God to work it out for our good, but we won't want to work it out for his good. Come on, say amen. So, in the book of Micah, chapter number 6, verse 8. Before we go there, I want to give you a little bit of background on this minor prophet, whom Micah is. He's a prophet from a small agricultural town, southwest of Jerusalem. His ministry overlaps that of Isaiah. But whereas Isaiah spoke primarily to the urban cities or the urban elite, Michael spoke regularly to regular folk in the suburbs. I want y'all to get this now. Michael's message calls the people to Listen to the word of the living God. Respect repeatedly, Micah says, Amen. Listen, mm -hmm. you leaders. Wow. Listen, you people. Listen to what the Lord says. Mm -hmm. Listen, stressing that you and I, and, and th that now is the time to pay attention. That's right. Look at somebody and say, It's time now. To pay attention. pay attention. I'm here to let you know that the sister act that used to keep on come on TV, y'all seen it, with Whoopi Goldberg. You gotta pay attention. 
If you want to be somebody, look at somebody and say, I want to go somewhere. But you got to stand up and pay attention. Come on, say yeah, yeah. And And so Micah was saying you got to stand up and pay attention. So much of Michael's prophecy is judgment addressed to the capital cities of Judah and Israel and the Jerusalem and Samaria, respectively. Their leaders practiced and tolerated false doctrine that led to false understanding of the character of God. Which ought to get that, put a pause right there, put a pin there. Of the character of God. And as a result, injustice toward the lowly, mistreatment of women and children, unjust business practices, and exploitation of the poor, many of whom were rural dwellers, like some of us are today. The rich were living in luxury, while the, man, while the marginalized suffered to pay for extravagance for those in power. We have that today, church. We got that today. Come on, say amen. Even as it declares judgment, let me say it again. Even as it declares judgment, Micah's prophecy offers hope for the coming prince of peace. Uh -huh. Through Micah's prophecy, God also promised a future kingdom where nations will live in peace and security. Talk about you and I. Where God's people will live in peace with each other. Micah's represents, amen, is talking about in the book of Micah chapter 5 verse 2. When Micah was saying the significant part of how God played a important part in the Old Testament. But read verse 6, chapter 6 and verse 8, Pastor Nancy. I want y'all to hear this. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. He hath shown thee, O man. Uh-huh. What is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Three qualities. Give the Lord a hand clap if you believe that. Praise the Lord. Three qualities that give us practical direction for how we can successfully navigate this life come on, come on. with all of his pressures. Well, Look at somebody and say, God has a navigational system has a navigational that can get the pressures off of our life. Ah, yes. Come on, say amen. Yes. Yes. The prophet Micah taught mm -hmm. that God wants his people to do three things. To do justice, yes. to love mercy, yes. and to walk humbly yes. with him. And we read the scripture again, and the word says, He hath showed thee, yeah. O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee, mm -hmm. but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Yeah. So my subject this morning will be, amen, what God wants from you. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants something from me. Yeah. I got to make sure I give it to him. Come on, say amen. So what the Lord requires of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Scripture and history, amen, in the Bible, biblical examples have proven repeatedly that when we give God what he wants to do things his way, our lives seem to turn out better. Anybody ever witness to that? When you give God what he wants, has your life changed for the better? Come on, say amen. When you decide that you want to get closer to God, things have happened in your life that you never thought possible. Come on, say amen. If you understand what I'm talking about. When you decided, amen, to loot, you get yourself off the road, the broad road into the narrow road, you decide, amen, you decide that you were going to follow Christ instead of the world, things begin to change for you for the better. Amen. So let's look a little bit closer at three individuals church family, in the Bible who had some struggles just like you and I today. Well, well, well. Yet they demonstrated the three qualities of living that God requires us of us through the book mm -hmm. of Micah. Yes. Come on. The first is the Apostle Paul. Uh -huh. 
In Acts chapter 26, we see the Apostle Paul standing in chains, church family, before two Roman officials who lacked moral character, who was falsely accusing him. Now, you can imagine, if you will, that Paul had a dilemma. Knowing these men were crooks, they were ungodly, they were unholy, they were unjust. Come on, say amen. Paul had to determine what he was going to say and what he was going to do. Paul had to orchestrate his words. He had to reframe, amen, his character. He had to make sure that he was not going to be out of line. Come on, say amen. You know, like some of us get today. Amen. Some of us say, man, the old self come out. When we get mad, we get mad. Come on, say amen. When we really get mad, amen, glory to God, that, you know, we, we say things and we come out of our mouth with some things, amen, that's unholy, unethical, amen, uncouth, amen, and we wonder by it with our mouth, amen, where did that come from? It came out of your heart. It came out of that because the Bible says out of the heart. The mouth, what? We'll speak. speak. Come on, say amen. amen. So Paul had to put a damper on his temper. Come on. And thank God he didn't go there with them or act unseemly with them, Pastor Nancy. But he chose to do what was right. Amen. Speak the truth in, in a gentle and a sensible manner. Amen. Good God Almighty. Let me tell you something. When you know that the devil is on your track, when you know, amen, the devil's trying to stir you up, ask the Lord to help you to reframe your words. Ask the Lord to help you to reframe your thoughts. Ask the Lord, amen, to bring your tongue, amen, under control. Ask God to help you, and he will do it. So when he spoke, he told the truth. He didn't hide nothing about himself. No, he, didn't. he explained his blood-stained history yeah. and then sugarcoat it. No, he, didn't. he painted the real picture yes, of his character uh -huh. and his life. I just heard my son talk about amen, his past life. Come on, say amen. This is what God requires. This is what God, amen, glory to God, gets glorification from. This is what God wants to do, to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Right. Right. Oh, glory to God. This morning, I came over here and I heard the song, Stump. Come on, say amen. Kirk Franklin sang Stump, amen. I've got the stump, nothing but the stump, praise the Lord. A lot of people don't understand. I'm here to let you know, if you want to stump the devil out, you better make sure, amen, glory to God, that you got the power to do so. Yeah. You can't stop him out if you're still hanging around this camp. The Bible says that Paul, he talked about, he told about his vision of the risen Christ who had called him to a new life. That whereas he was engaged in persecuting God's people, but now his mission and assignment was to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And proclaim the gospel, Paul did that. Come on, say amen. Even in the face of hostile people. Can I tell somebody, God is looking for somebody that will stand up and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. In the midst of hostile people. So Paul did right. Yes, he, did. he did what was right. Yes. Pastor Nancy. My God, my God. To do justly. Yes. Means to treat people fairly. Mm -hmm. And respectively. That's right. Come on say amen. That's right. Come on. To treat people fairly. And respectfully. My God, my God. It's the quality of being just. Yes. And being righteous. Come on, say amen. Amen, amen. It means to treat people fairly, even if they don't treat you that way. Right. Especially if we are in Christ, as we say we are. Yes. We are obligated to do what is right toward others. Yes. According to the word of the living God. Right. Can I tell you something? There are some folks that make me mad. 
I'm here, I'm here to let you know it's standing up here as a servant of the living God. Uh, there's some folks that make me mad. But I'll let you know, praise the Lord, God control my tongue. God control my actions. God control my thoughts. Hallelujah. Help me, Lord, not to blow up. Help me, Lord. Amen. Glory to God to keep the kettle, the lid on the pot. Help me, Lord, to keep it down, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, let you know, church family, when you speak the word of God, things begin to happen. The Bible says to do justly mm -hmm. is to do the word yes. according to the word ah. of the living God. Amen. To be a person that stands for moral rightness. Yes. To be just is the call to action. Mm -hmm. Not to be silent. Not to be complacent with others. Ah. Especially the most vulnerable which are abused and mistreated. Look at somebody and say the world is falling yes. because Christians have stood up, stand, uh, have not stood up. Well, the world is dropped yes. because Christians decide they want to take a back seat when yes. God is calling you to action. Come on, say amen. Yes. When God calls you to action, praise the Lord, he gives you the weapons that you need to fight in this battle. And our weapons are not carnal and carnal, amen. Our weapons, amen, are mighty pulling down stronghold. It got nothing to do with tools. But it has to do with the word. My God, my God. Speak the word. My God. Something else. In the book of Luke chapter 6. Verses 27 through 36. In the English Standard Version. It's a great scripture for all of us. To eat from and to follow. It says in verse 27, but I say to you, because everybody don't or won't hear right. or believe That's right. in God. Mm -hmm. But he said, love your enemies. Mm. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Yes. Pray for those who abuse you. Yes. To the one who strikes you on the other cheek. Mm. Offer the other one also. And from the one who takes away your cloak. Do not withhold your tunic either. That's right. Give to everyone who begs from you. Listen, yeah. listen. And from one who takes away your goods, mm -hmm. do not demand them back. My God, my God. We have a tendency mm -hmm. to demand things back. Yeah. Come on, say amen. Yeah. We have a tendency to beat somebody over the head because they didn't give it back to us. Yeah. Come on, say amen. We have a tendency to talk about them on Facebook and live stream. You know, I gave that person $20. I never got it back. <laughs> we'll send messages out. And we'll target people for wrong things. Come on, say amen. And God is telling you, he said, don't demand it back as a Christian. And as you wish that others would do to you, do the same to them. If you love those who love you, amen, what benefit is, it, is that for you? For even the sinners love those who love them. They do, y'all. They do, y'all. Amen. There the are folks out there in the world that love them, love themselves and love others more than we love folks in the church. Well, Come on, say amen. Yes, he said, and if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? That's the word. For even sinners do the same. Yes. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Well, even sinners lend That's right. to sinners, sinners. Mm -hmm. to get back the same mm -hmm. amount. But Jesus said to those of us who are believers, Luke says, but love your enemies. Do good and lend expecting nothing back. Isn't that what he said? Nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High. I love that part, Elder Brenda. You know why I love that? He said, if I lend something, Pastor Nancy, if I lend something, Mother Brenda, if I lend something, Minister Iron, to somebody, he said, don't worry about that. Don't worry about getting it back. He said, the more you do it, you'll be sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. The more you do it, we'll be sons and daughters of the most high. Come on, say amen. Glory to God. God will bless us. God said, praise the Lord, when we give it to somebody, don't look for it. He said,
said, I'll bless you. Yes, sir. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Ooh, glory to God. I serve a God that's never let me down. I serve a God, amen, glory to God, that I ain't broke yet. Come on, say amen. I serve a God that looks out for his own. And all God is saying also in this particular scripture, he said, be merciful even as your father is merciful. He said, the Lord is kind to the ungrateful. And the evil. And God is saying here that we are not to oppress or mistreat people. You and I don't have the right to abuse power by taking away good things that God has given to others. Like their light, their freedom, their property, their hopes. And their dreams. I'm the kind of a person that I believe that if someone did something to me, I won't take them to court, but I will take them to Jesus. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll take them to Jesus. Because you see, I know I brought nothing into this world, and I can't take nothing out. Come on, say amen. I know that my wife will be well, well taken care of. Come on, say amen. I'm here to let you know, amen, I'm not a court guy, praise the Lord. Because I realized, amen, the money that I was going to get, the court system would take all that anyway. Come on, say amen. amen. They'll divide it up with the police department. They'll divide it up with the fire department. They'll divide it up, amen, with the ambulance service, amen. And after a while, the property that I'm expecting to get is nothing. Y'all don't get that, praise the Lord, but I know that's right. So we're not to oppress people. We're not to send them to the system to get what we want. We're not to destroy their hopes and their dreams. That's justice, church. God also said in verse 36, he said, be merciful, amen, even as your father is merciful. That means to love kindness. Let's look at the story of Joseph in Genesis chapter 37. We're hastening on and I chose Joseph because all through Joseph's life, Joseph had a rough beginning. How many of you ever had a rough life and had a rough beginning? Be honest with yourself. That you can, amen, agree with Joseph in the scripture. His brothers who didn't like him were tired of him. They threw him into the pit. Some of you have brothers and sisters that way that tease you when you were growing up come on say amen that told on you when you were growing up come on say amen that got you in trouble when you were growing up although you didn't do anything but you got in trouble for what they did come on say amen the bible says they threw him into the pit but fearing for his life they came back Later, and took him out of the pit and sold him into slavery. Uh -huh. That's the word of God. Yeah. However, their father Jacob, they told him that he had been killed. Mm -hmm. And so the next few years, Joseph had some highs yeah. and he had some lows in his life. Well, Jesus. Amen. Minister Iris, he went from being a slave into Egypt to the king's palace. He went from being a filthy prisoner out of a prison dungeon eating with the prisoners in the dungeon mm -hmm. to being the chief servant in the king's palace God, to being the second of command of all Egypt my God, my to God. being the administrator over the food supply yes, yes. in Egypt. Come on, say amen. Look at somebody say, won't God do it? Yes. Lord, Lord, Lord. Listen, listen, listen. And when there was a famine in the land, oh. Joseph's brothers traveled to Egypt oh. looking for food. They didn't recognize Joseph for being, amen, glory to God, but Joseph recognized them. Joseph was a young boy when they last saw him, but now Joseph is in the full flat position of a grown man. Come on, say amen. Amen. Joseph went from low esteem to being raised up to high esteem. 
Come on, say amen. To a high position. He had the opportunity at that time to repay his brothers for what they did to him. Brother Gerald, but he didn't do that. He did the complete opposite. He showed them mercy and he showed them kindness. He forgave them and then provided for them with food. And to top that off, not only did he give them food, church, but we know the story. He moved them from the best land in Egypt to the best land. They had plenty to eat. They had plenty to drink. Because Joseph understood that God sent him to Egypt for such a time as this. Look at somebody and say, Joseph was a part of God's divine plan. Look at yourself and say, I am a part of God's divine plan. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're the part of God's divine plan. Hallelujah. Because Joseph understood that God sent him to Egypt. Amen. Glory to God. And he knew he had to obey God and extend grace and mercy to them. Amen. Even though he knew they didn't deserve it. This is just like God towards you and I. His grace and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. Although we don't deserve it, but I'm glad it's following me. Come on, say amen. Although I don't get it right, Mother Brenda, but I'm glad his grace and mercy is following me. Although I don't do things right, but I'm glad his grace and mercy is following me. Come on, say amen. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad that God loves me the way I am. Let me hasten on. Let me hasten on. To love mercy is to show kindness, which means to help the poor, the trodden, the hurting, like Joseph did to his brothers and his family, like good Samaritan did in the New Testament. So to be merciful, even as your father is merciful, isn't that what the word says? And the third character that we must have is to walk humbly with our God. Humility. And a person who walks humbly with their God. Come on, say amen. Jesus is the ultimate example of humility. It's not about me, but it's all about Jesus. Amen. Your neighbor on the shoulder say, neighbor, it's never, about me, it's never about me, but it's all about Jesus. I need to let you know that I don't think less of myself, but I think about myself less. Come on, say amen. I walk less and I listen more. I will be more of a giver and less of a taker or a borrower. I will more, I will love more. Come on, say amen. Anybody in here want to love more? Raise your hand. Amen. Glory to God. I will love more and not hate nobody. That's a word that I don't like to hear. I hate this and I hate that and I hate, you don't hate anybody. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. As a child of God, you ought to be a Christian that love on everybody and anybody, no matter where they come from, whose background they came from. You ought to love them anyway. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got to learn to be more of a servant than a boss. Come on, say amen. Huh? Now, now I know you got nobody here like this, Pastor Nancy. They want to boss their mother and father around. Come on, say amen. Want to tell him what to do? Praise the Lord. I've heard amen in my household. You, know, you better know your place and stay in it. Come on, say amen. You want to learn how to serve, amen, and be a, be a servant. Serve others, amen. Esteem others better than yourself. Yes, sir. Jesus didn't came not to be a boss, although he was a boss, but he came to serve others. David had many opportunities to learn humility in his lifetime. Whether as the youngest son in the family of the shepherds my God, my God. or when he had to depend upon the Lord to deliver him 
from the shouts of Goliath, the giant. Come on, say amen. amen. Maybe he learned to walk as many years on the run from King Saul. Or perhaps humility came after God calls him to many victorious battles in his life. And yet in Psalms 51, we find him a broken and a contrite man. My God, my God. Sister Diana, he made some catastrophic wrong choices. Yes, Sister Stacy, mm -hmm. his failures, amen, had him down. Come on, say amen. My God, my God. But David learned a lesson of humility. He was brought low before God and the people. Come on, say amen. amen. And at this point, he realized his need for grace. Look at somebody and say, I got a need for grace. Oh Hallelujah. Amen. He needed, amen, he had a need for cleansing and renewal. Oh he learned the hard way what it really meant, amen, to walk humbly with God. Oh and that he did, he found out that God is still the answer. Amen. What about you? Are you making wrong choices, amen? Those of you that are watching us by live stream, those of you that are sitting here with us, those of you that are on Facebook Live and TikTok and Twitter, are you making wrong choices, amen? Turning your own way, turning to your own understanding, amen, and don't acknowledge God. David learned the hard way, and we should learn a few lessons from this brother as he learned to walk humbly, with his God. Let's look at something else in the text and the scripture. The Bible then says in verse 6, He has shown thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Listen, God was not so much interested in the offering, but the offerer Amen. in the scripture. He was interested in the offerer, a person's character, Minister Byron, and behavior mattered more to God than any gift that they might bring. People were to act justly under God's standards. They were to love mercy, treating one another with love and loyalty. They were to walk humbly with God as their constant companion. And we ought to be conforming our lives to his will. Look at your neighbor and say, this is what the Lord requires of me. How do these three traits fit closer? In short, they all express what it means. To love your neighbor as yourself. Come on, say amen. As Jesus commanded for this is the will of God concerning you. That all, amen, of us should reflect the heart of love and the delight of our God in heaven. Justice is when you see someone mistreated and you respond in love to help to go rescue them. What am I saying? It's not enough for you to see the person in the accident and go, go up to the car and see if you can help them out. Come on, say amen. It's not enough for you to just drive by and keep on going down the road. But when you stop and see if you can lend them assistance, come on, say amen. Kindness is when you see someone in need and you respond in love to help them. Come on, say amen. I know some of us are frightened, amen, and we see the beggars on the street asking for money. But can I tell you something? I've learned a long time ago. Praise the Lord. The money's not mine anyway. If I can drop a dollar in the cup, if I can drop something in the cup, I'm doing what God Call me to do. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb of God. I'm not frightful of people anymore. My God, my God. And you know, glory to God. And you know what, Pastor Nancy? If they got a drug habit, that's not my problem. If they got something going on personally in their life, that's not my issue. Praise the Lord. But my job, amen, is to make sure that I can do what I can to help that person. Who? Who? Oh, glory to God. Can I tell you something, church? I believe, amen, if I give them that holy dollar that came out my wallet, I believe, 
no, no, no money in it now, but praise the Lord. If I, if I give them that holy dollar, they got a holy dollar in their wallet. Something might happen to them. Something might break off in their life. Something might touch them that they got money and it was somebody who's serving God. And God might change their life. I'll get that dollar back at home. Humility is when you see someone and you focus on them and not yourself. The Apostle Paul, Joseph, and David's life in his message today were examples that were set before us today. Therefore, church, it's a new year. Just know that we will have troubles in this life. We will have trials and tribulations. Amen. And as they began to sometimes seem to overwhelm us and weigh us down, just remember these great men that we just talked about and learn a lesson from each one of them. How to do what's right, to be kind to our enemies, to walk humbly with our God. For a person's character and behavior matters more to God than anything else. And I want my character to line up with the will of God. Come on, say amen. I want to make sure my character is right. Come on, say amen. I never want to be out of character with God. Oh, come on, give God praise. And give God glory. So if you want to know what God requires of you, I encourage you to read Micah. I encourage you to study more of the book. I encourage you to understand what Micah told, amen, to these group of people, amen, in his community. I encourage you to heed his words. And when you do that, mm -hmm. your life will be better. My God, my God. Your life will change. Yes, Lord. God sees greatness mm -hmm. in each and every one of us. Amen. God not only sees what we were, mm -hmm. but he sees what he wants us to become. Huh. Come, on, Come on, say amen. On, he knows what he wants us to become. Yeah. Come on, say amen. Let us all stand on our feet. I'm grateful for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm grateful oh, for my God who loved us so much. The Bible says he came in to seek and to save that which was lost. And in his ministry, Pastor Nancy, he didn't just go to the rich folk. But he traveled all throughout his life, some of the poorest cities in his time. He ministered to the lost. He ministered to everybody. And what I love about it, he didn't change his ministering. He didn't have one message for the rich and one for the poor. He carried the same message where he went to reach anybody and everybody. Because God loved man so much that the Bible says he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I'm here to let you know that God has said through Micah what he requires of you. He doesn't put in his stipulations. It's just that he wants you to live right, pray right, do right before him. And you know what? He doesn't charge you a fee to do that. Don't have to join a club. Don't have to put tattoos on your body. You don't have to, amen, go, amen, glory to God, do some heinous acts that will endanger yourself and somebody else. But all you have to do, as the Bible says in the word of God, in Romans 10 and 9, thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. If you're watching us by live stream, and you're watching us by YouTube and Facebook. And if you're here with us individually, as an individual, and you want God to touch your heart this morning, I'm asking you to surrender your hands up and give your life to God. 
I'm asking you to open your mouth up and say, Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Father, that's me. I need you. I want to do what you require of me. I'm tired of doing what everybody else requires. But I want to do what you require of me so that my life can be better. If that's you this morning, I'm asking where you're at to give your life to God. If that's you here, I'm asking you to come to the altar to give your life to God. I'm asking you if you want to, you've walked away from God, you've stepped away from God, you perhaps are in a bad slitten state, and you want to come and surrender again and give your life to God. Jesus said, he that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. If that's you, I'm asking you to come to the altar right now to rededicate your life to the living God. Amen. We see that there's none. Amen. We thank God for you. May heaven smile upon you. May the grace of the Lord be with you as you rest on your feet. Praise the off your feet. Praise the Lord. We thank God for your time. I'm going to ask that we would come. And I'm going to ask that you would keep in prayer as we pray over our, our prayer box. That you would ask, we ask that you would uh, come. If you want prayer for someone, we have the box up here at the beginning of this month. We'll take them out of the today. And we'll start next month afresh, praise the Lord, for prayer petitions and requests. If you want God to do something and the church to pray over your petition, we will do that. We ask, amen, that when you go home today, that you would keep in prayer our trustee, Brother James. Good join. Keep him in your prayer. Pray over him. Uh, mention, his, mention him in your prayer, in your travel. We ask that you would keep in prayer Sister Teresa Morrison and my brother who is in the hospital. Keep him in prayer at the time. We ask that you would do that. Uh, we ask that you would uh, ask the Lord to touch him. Amen. As she is not here with us today, but we ask that you would keep him in your prayer. Amen. Brother James Morrison. Amen. Huh? And who? For Tiana Neal. Amen. Keep her in your prayer also. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father and our God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we're coming, Father. And asking you, God, in Jesus' name, as we stand as a unified body, hallelujah, from one cause and one purpose, O oh God. We stand fitly joined together, dear God. God, and asking you, Lord God, to touch every petition in this box. Touch every request in this box. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. God, you know every intricate detail, O oh God, of the needs of those, O oh God, who put their trust in you in the name of Jesus. And you said in your word, O oh God, lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge us, you, and you would direct our path. God, we pray for direction, O oh God, in the life of these, O oh God, who are here in the name of Jesus, in the life of these requests right now. We call those things that are not as though they were. We speak, Father God, in the name of Jesus over finances. We speak. Father, over marital issues, oh God, that you will bring it back, Father God. We speak, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would heal somebody, God, by your stripes and make them whole. We speak, Lord, that you would touch and open up deaf ears and make blind to see in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we pray, Father, for Tiana Neal, whatever it is, Lord, that she's going through. Hallelujah. That you would touch it right now. That you would fix it for her in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying for Brother Good Joy and dear God, that you, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, God will touch his heart. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that he's battling with many internal struggles, God, that's going on in his heart and his mind. Lord, restore him right now in the name of Jesus. Bring healing, Father, in that area of his life. Please, Lord, we we'll give you glory and we we'll give you honor. And we say that all things work together for the good. To them that love the Lord, them that are called according to your purpose. We pray, Father, last but not least, for James Morrison. And that you would touch him, God. Thank you, Lord, for helping him, God. Making that blood pressure go down. Thank you, Lord, for dropping it down to a respectable number. God, that he'll be able, oh God, to function in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would rescue and be with his wife and his sons. Be with their God in times like these, Lord. Let them know that the Bible says there's nothing too hard for you to do. We say it is so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you all. I want you all to take.
Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. We bless the Lord. We thank God for you for joining us, those of you by live stream. Thank you so much for joining us. At this time, let us close out and give our benediction. Would you all stand? Please, at this time, praise the Lord. And the word of God in the book of Jude, chapter Chapter number one, verse 24 and verse 25, amen. The Bible says, down unto him that it's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. At this time, we're going to ask, amen, if you want to go out and greet somebody, amen, on your way out, amen, give them a hug, amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Have a great afternoon.